their spectrum stopped like right there. Like maybe if it was really... The so I just got done watching White Hot, A Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. This is a documentary about that incredibly expensive and overpriced clothing brand that anybody born in the 90s knows this company. This documentary is exploring sort of the origin of where Abercrombie and Fitch came from, kind of their rise as they became like one of the most hyped popular brands in the country, at least, you know, at least America, maybe globally as well. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. When I was a kid, like when I was in high school, this company, like there was, there was like the, the Avengers of like these kinds of brands, right? Like Abercrombie and Fitch, American Eagle, Hollister, Aero Pastel. Those were like the core four, the core group of like super exclusionary overpriced companies. Something that was interesting about a couple of these places, specifically Hollister and Abercrombie and Fitch. When you walk into those stores, it's really hard to not notice. There's a lot of shirtless employees, a lot of people with abs, a lot of girls in bikinis, specifically Abercrombie and Fitch. They really started this whole, let's get a bunch of people with abs into the store. But one of the things that this documentary explores is uh, not necessarily that these people had abs. There's all something about them aside from the abs. It was like the abs, and then there needed to be something specific about the person. Turns out, um, you know, maybe you could get away with that shit like 30 years ago, but uh, over the years, started to be more and more rumblings of people who were denied employment at Abercrombie & Fitch, specifically because instead of being here, they were probably closer to here, here. There's someone in this documentary who says that they were not on the schedule for two months and were that's essentially the way they would fire you. Like if you started asking questions about like why certain people had certain shifts and why you didn't, you're gone. It's kind of wild because I remember when I was a kid, like I was obsessed with getting something from one of these stores. Like I remember going to Hollister and Abercrombie and like looking in the sales section, which the sales section at these stores was like, instead of $80 for a t-shirt, they charge you $60. Like I remember saving up and I was able to get two shirts from Hollister. Could never afford anything from Abercrombie. The store was way too fucking expensive. I had two Hollister shirts and I had one pair of jeans and I was so excited. I had the little seagull, right? That's how you knew it was, it was a real deal. I had the little seagull. Felt like I made my arms look great even though I weighed like 95 pounds back then. But I didn't realize that I was completely falling for the marketing. And that's kind of what this documentary gets into amongst a lot of other insane stuff. But one of the crazier takeaways was like not realizing how targeted a lot of this marketing is towards just selling popularity. In my school, the popular kids wore those brands. They wore Arrow, they wore Abercrombie, they wore Hollister. And like, you know, my family, we were more like Old Navy, like Kmart. Yo, Kmart, all right, hold on, hold on. Kmart actually had some cool stuff. If you wanted to be cool or you wanted to be perceived as cool, if you're trying to trick the cool kids into thinking you were one of them, you had to wear one of those brands. They did a pretty good job of like bottling up that high school coolness into a into a store. And like you wanted the stuff because you thought if I have it, I'll be a cool kid. Now, like I said, one of the biggest problems Abercrombie ran into was um, they were super racist and the internet existed. When you bring these two things together, these two factors, that's enough to get you sort of canceled. I mean, you know, I know everybody freaks out about that word these days, but uh, in the case of Abercrombie, their spectrum stopped like right there. Like maybe if it was really... And that's the weird thing, because they were selling this like American idealism, but I think when you're trying to sell American idealism, that's a little outdated. What ends up happening with a lot of these brands, and it sort of seemed like Abercrombie was the fall guy for sort of what happened here, was that they got busted for racial discrimination, which it's so insane because so much of the world now is about representation and 
Abercrombie was representing like all the wrong stuff. And there's like a lot of other stuff in this documentary about like the people who were running it and taking naked pictures of all the dudes. And there was like some not so great stuff going on. Um, maybe featuring a billionaire who had like a private island or something. Anyway, now what was great is that they were able to get so many original people who worked for Abercrombie and Fitch at so many different levels and recruiters and vice presidents and designers and all this kind of stuff. This is one of those documentaries that is not leading anything. They are presenting the actual facts of what happened in a company that got completely exposed for really shitty hiring practices and having a bunch of fucking creeps working for them. What's funny now, if you go onto the Abercrombie and Fitch website, their company is completely different now. Their prices are a lot different as well. I don't know if how much longer they're gonna survive. I think in general, stories like this, it's just always interesting to see companies that are like being super racist or exclusionary and they know that they're being super exclusionary and they know that being that way is super illegal and they do it anyway and they get caught and exposed and embarrassed and god you just love to see it.